Today, I'll be giving some updates from the machine learning team about both simplex and duplex phase calling. So first, let's start with simplex, one strand at a time. So the big news in simplex base calling, as you might have heard so far, is the switch in sampling rate on our devices from 4 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz. This means we're taking more measurements per second from the same signal. So I want to briefly discuss the motivation behind this switch and the impact that it has on base calling. So more measurements sounds great, right? Why not crank up the sampling rate as high as it can go? Unfortunately, at a higher sampling rate, each individual measurement is noisier and not in a simple way where we can just average out that noise over the additional measurements. Unfortunately, the noise comes from intrinsic features of the electronics and the sensors in a way that's complicated and also sort of nonlinear with the sampling rate. So there's actually sort of an intermediate sampling rate where we get the most benefit from measurements without the impact of that noise. And so for our signal and for our devices, we found that 5 kilohertz gives us that great balance. So having 25% more data um, across the whole pipeline also causes pressures in other areas. For example, data transfer or storage. So the teams have been hard at work to accommodate this additional data. And in particular, our pod5 file format has made it much more feasible um, to work with this increased amount of data. Finally, on the base calling side, naively, more data would mean slower base calling for the same reads. But of course, um, we can make tweaks to the model architecture to accommodate this. So after some experimentation, um, we went with increasing the stride in the convolutional layers of the network. So the stride is the step size along which the convolutional filters move along the signal. So by increasing the stride, we're doing a bit more downsampling in those intermediate layers, and that lets us make use of the additional information without compromising anything in terms of base calling speed. So let's look at some accuracy comparisons between 4 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz conditions. So these are read accuracy histograms. This is a set of reads, native human data aligned to the reference, and I'm showing the accuracy um, in Q-space. So the gray histograms are showing the 4 kilohertz condition with the V4.1 models, and in blue, the new 5 kilohertz condition with those updated version 4.2 models. So we can see that both for the high accuracy hack condition and the super accuracy sub models, there's a substantial improvement in accuracy from going to the higher sampling rate. And in particular, I want to point out that for the hack model, the 5 kilohertz condition is now at Q20. So now let's move on to duplex sequencing. So um, in duplex, we know that we have two molecules, um, two strands from the single molecule that we're reading at the same time. And so because those represent the same sequence up to things like modifications, um, we know that we can jointly infer over both of those signals to obtain a more accurate individual output read. Um, and so in particular, we can move from Q20 accuracy for a single strand up to Q30 accuracy for the duplex strand. So how does this happen on the flow cell? Here I'm showing a double-stranded DNA molecule, and one end by chance will start sequencing first. That first strand is shown in blue, and as it goes through, it unzips from the second strand shown in red. So when the first strand finishes sequencing, that leaves the five prime end and the motor of the second strand in very close proximity to the pore. So with some probability, it will follow its mate through the same pore and sequence right after. So we detect this duplex pair in the output reads by finding two complementary sequences that went through the same pore one after another. So why is duplex so beneficial to accuracies? One aspect is simply that having two measurements reduces the impact of statistical noise. That's pretty simple. But in addition, that second strand sequence has different bases, and it's moving in a different, the opposite direction through the pore. So it's really orthogonal information compared to the first strand. So let's look at an example of this in some real data. This is a snippet of a squiggle shown in black. Um, this is the first strand, so time is moving from left to right. And I've annotated this with the base color information, so the base is above and the colored blocks. Uh, this is the corresponding region on the bottom from the second strand. So time here is moving from right to left. Um, and you can see here that this does represent the reverse complement sequence. Zooming in on this region, we find that there's one base where these two base calls actually disagree with each other. Um, and we can sort of see that the second strand has a bit more information in this particular case. And indeed, the second strand was correct. So this gives you a feel for how these two very different signals work together to produce the duplex base call. So last time at NCM, I talked a bit about different approaches to base calling. But today, I'll skip to the version that we've implemented in Dorado, which we call stereo duplex. So this is how it works. We take our two input signals, we base call them independently with the normal simplex model, and we do a reverse complement on the, the second strand. 
we can then take those two base call sequences and align them to each other and use the sequence space alignment to align the quality scores, as shown above, and to align the signals themselves, as shown below. We can take all of this alignment information, all of these features, and feed them into the stereo base caller model. This model has a very similar architecture to the simplex base caller, except that it has this richer multi-feature input. The base caller is also flexible enough to accept simplex base calls from either the hack or the sub models. The base caller then produces that high quality output sequence. So speaking of that, let's look at the accuracies of duplex base calling. So again, these are histograms of raw read accuracies for native human data aligned to the best reference that we have. This is from the five kilohertz condition. We see the duplex accuracy shown in blue, and in gray, the corresponding simplex accuracies for the first strand of each of those pairs. So this shows the direct improvement that you would get from duplex. And again, here I want to point out that the hack condition, um, we have modal accuracies close to Q30 already for the hack condition at 5 kilohertz. That's very exciting. As usual, we see that these accuracies are also independent of the read length. So we have those high quality Q30 reads all the way up to hundreds of kilobases. So these are duplex reads, um, very long. So, I want to stress that not every application will require Q30 data. There are some cases where Q20 can solve the problem just fine. But then when you do need the extra accuracy, this duplex uh, can make all the difference. So one particular example is telomere to telomere genome assemblies, or T to T. So these have been in the news a lot lately. There are new tools coming out, like for example, Virco. And so these assemblies, to do in an automated fashion, take sort of three key ingredients. Um, the first one is to have a source of long but very high accuracy reads, so tens of kilobases at Q30. And this is where duplex can fill that role really nicely. These form the basis of the assembly graph, and so they really do need to be high accuracy. In addition, we have some ultra-long, you know, 100 of kilobase reads to span the most difficult, repetitive, or ambiguous regions, as well as for diploid assemblies, some source of haplotype phasing information, like that from PORC. So with this, you can make an automated telomere to telomere assembly of human genomes or other species um, in this automated way. And so Sean McKenzie and others from our applications team have been doing a lot of interesting work along these lines. Um, they're here today with posters, and so please go talk to them if you're interested about assembly and other applications of duplex. But I want to wrap up by saying how Stereo Duplex is implemented in Dorado and how you can use it right now. So um, this workflow that I described has been in Dorado since 0.1 but there was this additional upstream step that was required, and that's to identify which candidate reads should be paired up. So we had a package for this, but it was a bit complicated and also required some additional uh, base calling of the signal in the first place. So there's some duplication of effort here that we'd like to avoid. So with a lot of work from the Dorado team, we thought of an all-in-one integrated workflow um, that could replace this. So this is what it looks like. The only input required is the input pod5 file and your choice of simplex model. Dorado will begin to base call those strands with the simplex base caller. Uh, as it goes, it outputs those simplex base calls to the output file. But it's also looking through those base calls to identify pairs. When it finds pairs, it groups them up with the signals, does the encoding, and sends them to the stereo base caller, just as I described before. So that is continuously outputting duplex base calls as well. So, in Dorado version 0.3, we have this all-in-one workflow. Um, there's just one simple command shown here that you need, um, and it will output all of your base calls, simplex and duplex, um, just like that. So I want to stress that not only is this simpler than the workflow previously, but it's significantly faster. In part, this is because Dorado is intelligently parallelizing these steps, doing simplex, duplex, and pairing in an efficient way across the CPU and the GPU to maximize performance but also because, as George mentioned, any improvements we make to the simplex base callers translate very readily to the stereo base callers because they share a similar model architecture. So we encourage you to give this a try and let us know. Thank you very much for your attention.